Hello and welcome back to the Chromecast at the Rising Moon. Hey guys, on this channel I do pick a card readings. Um, I also have a podcast called Logical Magic Examining Esoterica. I also have a Patreon with Monday through Friday spiritual advice where I'm also beginning to teach how to read tarot, particularly with an emphasis on how to read reversals as it feels like not enough people teach that. And all of those things will be linked in the description box down below if you want to check them out. But today's pick a card is a fortune reading. It's an old fashioned fortune telling card. We're gonna use some of the tea leaf cards. I've got them separated into kind of the positive attributes and then the challenges that you might be facing because that's an important area as well. I have multiple fortune telling decks. We have three piles in a pick a card. What you wanna do is stop Concentrate, there's gonna be a moment here with no talking, pretty much no sound, so that you can focus on the cards. Close your eyes, breathe in, breathe out. The deck that seems to almost be coming towards you is the deck that is likely to have the messages that you are most meant to receive. It's a general reading, so I can't have messages for everybody, but if you feel one of the piles calling out to you, if you feel more than one, by all means, watch more than one but see which one calls out to you and I will see you at the time of your reading. Okay, if you chose pile number one, you chose the animal totem tarot, tarot. that's gonna be bringing you your infinity spread, which is what I almost always use on um, YouTube. These are the tea leaf reading cards. Because this is a fortune telling, um, we're going to get uh, the basic energies to see which part of your fortune is trying to be revealed through the cards. We're also gonna get a challenge card to see what that's about. Then we'll get your predictive cards and we're gonna incorporate a bunch of oracle cards as well. Let's get going here. And as I get going here, guys, please don't forget to subscribe because it helps my channel. If you hit that post bell notification, you'll know every time I post a video. And if you like the reading, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. As I said in the intro, I have a podcast and I have a Patreon and everything. And how to book me is through my website. It's the only way to book me. And that's also linked in the description box down below. Let's get going here. For pile number one, what does their fortune look like? What does their fortune look like? What are we talking about here? All right, let's get this on the table. And we're going to put down all the cards. And I have it with the strength card in reverse, which is card of vulnerability. Um, sometimes it's a need to heal. Um, it can be a card that is more fear-centric because, of course, it's the Leo's card. It is the card of bravery, of courage. We're going to see what's coming up here with Queen of Wands, somebody who's making things happen. On a healing journey, you've made a lot of progress. And, like, the future looks very different than the past here. With the Ace of Cups in reverse, learning to release things and letting things come and go very easily. The Ace of Cups in reversals are not bad. That's part of the reason that I'm teaching tarot on my Patreon um, with some reversals and going through the entire tarot deck to talk about what the reversals mean. They are not negative. They just have a different meaning. And the Ace of Cups in reverse is allowing things to flow back and forth easily. It's the release of emotions in this particular area. And that comes out with the Five of Wands in the upright, which can be competition and challenge. That's coming out with the Nine of Cups in the upright. And it comes out with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, this is one of the areas where um, a reversal is going to be very helpful to know. When you get a number in the upright and then one in reverse, that is an area of your life that is expanding. And you can look to numerology to help you understand what those draws might mean. So nines, they're about our independence, our individuality. Sometimes it's about spending some time by yourself. And it kind of feels that way, like you got a little bit isolated. That's a very common energy um, ever since lockdown is that we were kind of trapped with ourselves and we had to figure out who we really were going to be and who we wished to be and the things that we were coping with and the things we wanted to change. That comes out with King of Wands in reverse. Okay. Another card of emotional release, Hierophant in reverse. Our two outcome cards are going over there. Let's get the fortune reading cards before I, this is the positive attributes. Now, does that mean the other cards are negative? No, it's just usually about things you need to look out for, the challenges we might face. Let's get going here. These, this is a very big deck. Um, I'm going to get those out of, I wasn't ready to cut anyway. There's going to be some timing cards in here. And here we go. One came out. Months of the year. 
February. Interesting. That's the dead of winter energy. Remember, winter is when we uh, release old energies. Like you should have just come out of a period in which you were, hmm, it felt like everything took a really, 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 really long time. And that for a while you really wondered if there was going to be anything that was ever going to be any different. With basket, recognition, reward for merit. Let's think of February as like it's the tail end of winter. One more on this one. We're going to go with fire. Strong emotion, passionate love or hate. Hey, that is exactly what's reflected here. I was talking about how this is a card of emotional release. This is another card of emotional release. Um, hmm. If it felt in the recent past like all you've ever done is kind of wade through the negative, it, it served a purpose in your life to help you learn how to cope with the opposite energies because we can't just live in one unvaried energy. If everything was always great, it would just become commonplace. It wouldn't feel great anymore. We're going to have ups and downs in life and our challenges are one of the easiest ways that we learn, including what weaknesses we're trying to uh, overcome what strengths we're trying to develop, which is kind of what this is talking about. With the Strength card in reverse, Nine of Cups in the upright is one of those cards of bounty, of wish fulfillment, of the life is a banquet type of energy. But it looks to me like you weren't ready for the things that you were trying to bring into your life. It's not a criticism. Remember, we all have things to learn. We all have areas to grow in. And, but that you're getting closer and closer to that. The thing that you still struggle with is apparently appropriate emotional release, but you've been doing really well with that. You're going to need to be very, with the Hierophant in Reverse, which is card of non-traditionalism or of non-conformity, is one of the Rebels cards. Um, it's also, wow, you just got five in the upright there, five in Reverse. Remember, those are big changes coming into your life. Fives are about change, they're about alteration. We have Camel. Persevere and you will overcome problems. That's a pretty good, if you're gonna have, uh, so mm, not the favorite thing to say, but that period where nothing was happening, that period where no matter how much you tried, you couldn't make something happen, was about teaching you to stick with yourself, to have confidence in yourself. Because the strike card in reverse is not just about illness or weakness or uh, fear. Um, it can be about like uh, needing to develop the ability to have confidence. Um, Leos are very, very, very confident. The strength card is the Leo card. And then we've got Fox. Shrewdness and resourcefulness, especially in business. That's really a good energy. We want one more on this. Dagger. Fear, worries, tense situations. Okay, so you um, have, one of the things that's coming to you through a multiple events, if it hasn't already arrived, is that you're gonna have some opportunity to come, some, confront some peers, fears to overcome them. That has been part of your past. If this is your reading, that has been part of your recent past. Um, general readings can't apply to everybody because there's literally billions of people in this world. This particular reading is about somebody who has overcome a tendency towards self-doubt, towards anxiety, and towards fear. And that sometimes it's a little ongoing. That's normal. We live in a really, like, there's a lot of pressure in this world. And it's normal to try and have to cope with it. But what's coming up for you is like a payoff. This is one of the cards of rising to the top of competition. And it's through your own methods. Meaning that being true to yourself is the thing that is going to bring you the greatest success in life. That you are not meant to be like other people. Now that can be an isolating and a difficult experience sometimes. And apparently you really, really have struggled with what to do with negative emotions. Like they either came out too much or you couldn't let them out or you didn't, like you misdirected them. So totally normal. Please forgive yourself for that and know that if you haven't done your healing work yet, please do it and it will yield the results that you want. But this is really one of the readings that is talking about all the work that you have done is paying off. There's success in business for you. We've got the strong emotions, recognition, reward for merit. But the stuff that you struggle with is exactly the stuff that makes your success possible. That passion, that drive, that is also the thing that fuels that frustration, that anger, and sometimes even that fear. But your fortune is that like having accomplished this work, like look for a complete turnaround, this changing energy around what you're facing. Your perseverance is being rewarded. 
I don't, there's some, there are some tense situations in this world and that is unfortunately going to continue. And like, please don't pay too much attention to it. Participate in the process to the point of being responsible, but don't, don't dwell on that energy too much. It degrades your own energy and your own ability to make a difference. We have the Wheel of Fortune in reverse, which is learning to let things go. And then the Knight of Swords in reverse, which is anger. Um, so, hey, listen, remember, I'm like, I'm a very straightforward reader. And so whenever you're like hearing something about negative attributes or things that you've been struggling with, you're not being called out or criticized. You're being told there's a purpose. If you have been struggling with your anger, because these are two cards of exactly this element, you have a lot of fire with that Queen of Wands. It doesn't mean you're a fire sign. I'm not necessarily an astrological re reader. This can be, you know, the uh, fire energy of Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. I don't believe it is here. I think because the Nine of Pentacles in reverse is another card of frustration. It is almost like you had to burn through your frustration with the pace of things to understand that like no amount of insisting it has to be now was going to make the universe bring you the manifestations that you were trying to bring to. That you had to find the way to find your equilibrium. Going forward, you are still going to struggle with these particular emotions. Have a method in place for what you do, how you talk to yourself. Repression will never work. And you do have to learn how to let it out. And you and not usually not in another person. That's usually not something that's going to help. But that it will bring you great rewards. You will overcome your problems. Let's see what, what the fortune reading cards are talking to us about. This is the, you know, literally the fortune reading cards, proposal. A romantic or business opportunity is indicated. I have to tell you that even though that the Wheel of Fortune is in reverse there, remember that's a new karmic cycle beginning that there is a new cycle in your life where you will still be you. Like you're like you haven't released a former version of yourself. You've learned how to live in harmony with it in a way that will help you get your best rewards. For some people this is indicating a new romantic partner. It's not in this particular draw, but we're going to keep going. I'll get some love cards on this because there's that indication. Here we go. What else do we have going on? There's a flourishing energy over you, particularly within about the next two years, where the things that you turn your attention to, like it will take a little while for these things to take root and to flourish and to grow and for you to experience the abundance that you've been hoping for. But it is absolutely within the realm of what is in store for you. Expect some setbacks to try and teach you again that need for perseverance. Sometimes we don't learn how to stick with something until we've been challenged. There have been challenges. This is one of the cards of challenges as well. Luck. You're right to be strong and optimistic about the opportunities ahead. Hey, pile number one. Um, this is very, very focused on like business yay. Things are looking good in that particular area. The, the one thing that you want to remember is as you succeed, part of the reason they held you back until you learned how to deal with, you know, potentially like an anger issue, which is not so you're a rage ball. Remember, if like, if I can spot it, it's because I've got it. I have a temper that could blow up and like rain down upon Pompeii. Um, I've long since learned to control it and to work with it. So it's part of the reason I can see it when it's in somebody else's cards. Things were held back until you could learn how to focus your energy in a productive way and to deal with your emotions in a way that was dealing with your emotions rather than pouring your energy into a project or to work, including sometimes relationships, which is something that your fortune cards kind of want you to know that like your every part of your life is going to improve because of the work that you've done. If it sometimes feels like it doesn't feel like it's improving, it it. We, first, we have to wade through the swamp of our own stuff until we reach the clear, hard ground where we have clarity and understanding of ourselves, that we really do. Life is a challenging business. And as much as we think we want these, like, you know, you'd get bored. If your life was really, really easy, it leads to dissatisfaction because you don't have a sense of accomplishment. And you've been dealing with the lesser, the shadow side stuff, Boy, the, the thing I want you to hear is that you're going to have really good like guidance on what decisions to make going forward in a business area and that there's a lot of increase coming to you. The black cat, your luck will soon change. I love it when we get echoes. And then I have the hourglass, time is of the essence with the golem, a close friend acts on your behalf. 
Um, so this isn't going to true for, hold true for everybody, but for some of you, you have strong friendships forming with business communities. Meaning what starts out as a business connection takes a far more personal turn with it. Um, when it comes to finances, one of the things that I really like about this is that you have a lot of peace in that area where I don't think you have before. There's just a really big change in the approach to how you evaluate where you are in life. That period of like nothing happening and like nothing bending to your will was to treat you how to deal with your own frustration. Which the reason we need to do that is we live in the modern age, we live in the social media age. One mistake can follow you forever. It can blow up everything you've tried to work really, really hard to do. But the more control you have of yourself, and control does not come from repression, it comes from understanding of self. So that you can recognize what's going on in you and you can be like, aha, I am responding to that part of myself with the appropriate care, I'm not reacting. And you've likely had a super frustrating journey with trying to make something happen in a professional capacity. And it was to teach you how to cope with your own frustrations so that it didn't come out in the wrong. Because here, here's what you have to know about success is that there's always jealousy. There's always jealousy. And the very people who sometimes are tweaking out your temper, it is an issue of them trying to get a rise out of you. And it is so that they can use that rise as a weapon against you. And so you kind of have to be like, I am unleavened bread when it comes to you. You are not going to get a rise out of me. It is not, and it's very, it's such a neutral feeling. It's not an aggressive feeling. It's not a, you know, it's not a blocking energy. It's just kind of what other people do as you learn to persevere will simply have flowed past you. But what you need to hear from this one is that it's bringing you everything that you hoped for, is that there's more coming to you, there's increase coming to you, there's success coming to you. If you're still working on this, remember, you know, work on your chakras. It's one of the easiest ways to get things done. This is the Shishu Oracle. We're going to get a couple cards from it. I really, really like it. Pivot. Sometimes when things aren't falling into place after trying and trying, it's time to ask yourself if pivoting in some way would be a good idea so that your life can flow more easily and effortlessly. How could you pivot even just a little bit? This is asking you to be open to a change that is coming to you in the ways that you do things to try and expand your success. And that there's no, because here's what happens, rigidity blocks manifestations. It is the easiest blocking, the most frustrate, frustration blocks manifestations as well. And that when we're held in stasis for a long period of time in a very frustrating way, it makes us learn how to cope with our frustration in order to be able to get anything done. And so that you no longer have that blocking energy and that you will allow change and alteration to your plans, you're not in a rigid structure any longer. You're more malleable to what the universe is trying to lead you towards. You have a good idea of what you're trying to do and you're, you're like visualize the life that you want. It's going to be an important part of it is visualizing the home you want, visualize the trips that you want, visualize the cars that you want, visualize the relationships, the change and the difference that you might want to make in this world. Visualize those things happening, but know that the shape and the form that it takes may be different when it comes to you. And that's the reminder in your fortune reading card. Connect. You're being asked to connect with others in meaningful ways. Sometimes it's helpful to get new perspectives and to simply be around other people. You're in need of this right now and deep connections will benefit you in many ways. Now, the one thing I want you to hear on this with this close friend acts on your behalf is that it, it really, it helps to have somebody with a fresh perspective talk to you about what you're doing. Um, it, honest goodness, have a trusted advisor in your life. Don't give them control of your life, but be open to hearing what they're talking about because the universe is trying to send you things that will be helpful to you, but that it will involve learning how to be flexible and learning how to make the changes that will bring you the success that you want. But there is a lot of monetary success for you and your happiness is very much in your hands. Now, we've got the February marker on that, which again, remember, it, that is one of the seasons where, you know, the ground lies fallow, it recuperates so that it can grow later. Please look at that period of stasis of your life as a necessary part of the season of your growth for 
remember what follows winter is spring, which is when new things flourish, when new projects take off, when creativity and inspiration come to you. Please look to be more inspired, particularly after you attempt to connect, because this is not just with another person. Please develop a meditative practice. I did a podcast on how to meditate if you have anxiety or depression. I will try to remember to link it in the description in the little area up above. Um, please listen to that because it, for overthinkers, for people who are prone to trying to repress their emotions so that they get in the way of our ability to connect with our divine self, it outlines a method step by step of how to start connecting. And once you master it, you start meditating without effort. So many of the people I meet with these big, big energies, these fantastic manifesting energies, they really struggle with, manif with, uh, with meditating because it's about clearing your mind. And it's not, it doesn't require effort. It comes when you ask it to, once you've cleared away that backlog of frustration and anger and learning how to deal with it productively so that it works on your side instead of standing in your way. Let's get an Oracle of Love card or two here because there was an indication with this, you know, a romantic or business proposal. I have to tell you, this seems to be mostly about business with like things taken off and you being ready to handle the challenges that come with success. Because it's not all just, you know, money rating from the sky and accolades. It is that thing I was talking about where the more successful you are, the more people will try and come for you. And you have to be like, you really just have to let it go past, to not react to it, to not feed the energy at all, which will just make it ravenously hungry for more. You have to be able to let it go. Finances. Financial challenges are affecting this connection. Forgiveness. Forgiving yourself or another will help you move forward. And then, let's see. I actually have a twin flame. This is a divine connection uh, and then a leap of faith. So, twin flames. I did a podcast on that as well. There's shadow side connection until everybody's in alignment and in greater balance. Finances, forgiveness, twin flame, and then leap of faith. Um, I have a close friend that acts on your behalf. Twin flames are not a, uh, twin flames are a difficult thing because they're our opposite. When we look into a mirror, because that's what that is, it's a mirror reflection. Remember, everything is reversed. It's the opposite energy. And so it's there to help us shed light onto our shadow side. A lot of people get caught in a twin flame connection because it's so intense and so fiery. And they tend to ignore that it's like there's an emotional piece that's not quite fitting. Do your work and there's a possibility of it doing that. Um, this is a divine counterpart connection. It's interesting because twin flames are not always our divine par uh, partner. They're not. But that they are the counterpart, the counterpart, the yin to your yang, the balancing energy, which is why it's the opposite energy. Some twin flames end up together, some don't. Never try to force the issue. And it does look like forgiving somebody on something where they might have done you a little bit dirty is the thing that will also help a great deal. To have faith in yourself, to believe in your ability, to get what you're hoping for and what you've been trying for, and don't give up and don't stop. That your fortune is to be actually quite successful, but that the only thing that stands in your way is that sometimes you wanna give up because it's hard. And it will get easier, and all of the challenges that were brought to you were brought to you so that you could learn to deal with this Strong emotions, passionate love or hate, this feeling of conflict within. That it, because it can be the everything ruiner until you learn how to deal with it. When, if you go back and watch any old readings from me, I talk a lot about patience. And it can even, it's not synonymous with waiting, it's peace. Patience is peace, patience is power. When you're really in a patient energy, it doesn't bother you to be patient. It's just like, yeah, well, I'll do something else till it's time. And that's what they've been trying to help you achieve. But you have a lot of good luck in the future. And apparently, like, I, what I, I took those love cards because I thought they were talking about a romantic connection. They don't appear to be talking about a romantic connection. You may have had to recover from toxic relationships in which you won't get a lot of detailed relationship uh, information because it may not be good for you. But that you do have all forms of happiness coming into your life. Yeah, I like this. The Knight of Swords in Reverse. That's that anger energy and a new day dawning with how you cope with frustration that will keep you very safe and successful as you move forward. Take action. What do we got? Improving health. 
Oh, interesting. Romance and then listen to your intuition. <laughs> All right, so this is not meant to be a romantic reading, and we've reached the, like I try to keep these under 25 minutes a pile, and we've reached the, uh, the end of that particular one. It, romance readings, listen, I know there's a ton of pick of cards out there. Um, it, your individual energy is best discovered through private readings, but the pick of cards can help guide you towards your next steps in romantic relationships. So in this particular one, it was very, very, very much about like, hey, listen, you're probably really frustrated after a period of not a great deal happening, but a lot's going to happen now. Lean in on doing your healing work to hasten that process along. Know that success is yours and that it's going to take you very surpri by surprise when it starts happening. And by it, what do I mean? I mean the success that is yours by the right of all of the, the, all of the energy that you've put into it, everything that you've worked for. They were just trying to help you come an, uh, a bunt on basically a vulnerability in your emotional response system that had to do with how you handle frustration and anger. And again, in the modern world where things are etched into a digital record, it is super, super vital to be able to have a lot of self-control to achieve success and then to retain that success so that you stay in that peaceful, detached energy. And that pivot energy is, there is a change coming to you in your success that you need to be able to be open to doing something differently and that it does come to you partially through a business offer that is brought to you and it will come when it is meant to but that if you're still in the healing phase to know that it's, it's there for a reason. It's to help you solidify, to have your things take root so that you retain them, okay? That was your fortune. Take care, be well. Welcome back. If you chose pile number two, this is your reading. We're putting the number two over there so people can easily fast forward to their readings, but there are timestamps in the description box down below. We have the Wizard's Tarot bringing us our infinity spread, which is the predictive spread that I usually use on YouTube. And then we have the positive attributes from the tea leaf cards and separated from the challenge ones. And we're gonna get a card from each because there will be challenges in life sometimes, but let's get going with your fortune reading. What is the fortune for pile number two? Remember, these are general readings and they can't possibly contain a message for everybody, but I hope you find one here. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe because it helps my channel. If you like the reading, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. There is a link to my website in the description box down below. It's the only way to book me. And I do have a podcast and I do have a Patreon. If you need spiritual advice Monday through Friday, you can get it through my Patreon. My podcast is free to everybody and it contains all kinds of healing advice and magic advice as well. Ace of Swords in Reverse. Learning what to let go of and how to cut ties with those who have not served you has been something that you've struggled to learn. With the Nine of Pentacles in reverse, interesting. That's a frustration energy, that's an energy vampire energy. With the Eight of Wands in reverse, which can feel like a blocked journey. And then I have the Four of Swords in reverse, which is action, things happening. Um, there's a release to receive energy on this particular one. That again, this is an interesting one because there was a connection within your life that you were being asked to release that held you back from things that you were trying to achieve. Um, I get the feeling it's already gone, okay? Like because there's this blocked energy on this. Remember, reversals are not bad. They're actually, they just have a different meaning. I know all the ones up here are in reverse, but it's not a bad thing. This card is good in reverse. This card is also about knowing what to release and what to retain. Um, I do teach reversals on my Patreon as well. Two of Swords in Reverse, which is clarity, having your psychic eye opened. Boy, it's like you've met people in your life. You've met a lot of energy vampires. That period, particular period of your life is passing into memory um, as long as you make productive choices around it. It did serve a purpose, which is how to guard yourself against those who would try and use your gifts. I have the Page Cups in Reverse, which is a surprising set of circumstances. It can be an apology as well. We have another card for Clarity, the Moon in Reverse. And then we have yet another card, the World in the Upright. These are underlying issues. Infinity spreads are interesting because it's like two different sentences and then it discusses the 3D energies with the subconscious energies. 
Your subconscious energies are in really good shape around clarity, around knowing yourself. Um, you've been through a period of getting to know parts of yourself that you didn't like to acknowledge. Like I said, unfortunately, I have multiple energies around it has either happened now or will soon be happening of needing to release some energies of the Nine of Pentacles in reverse can be an energy vampires card. Now, what are energy vampires? Sometimes they're just people who don't know how to cope with their own emotional needs. That you have a lot of personal power and that people have come towards you who have tried to utilize your power for their own. That what's changing the future, how your future is differing from the past, is that you are far more likely to recognize that part, to cut ties appropriately, to make good choices, even if somebody is expressing like remorse over some of the way, if they no longer have access to you. That is something I need you to know. I have somebody express, expressing remorse or apologizing to you who has been cut out of your life. It is a test. Be careful. Just because somebody's forgiveness does not mean access. Okay, please remember that. Forgiveness does not mean access. If that message is for you, you're going to know exactly who I'm talking about. With the four swords in reverse action, new things beginning, complete cycles. This is actually very good. Temperance, healing, alchemy, one energy being turned to another. It's the Sagittarius card as well. And then the star, which is the card of divine connection, of psychic connection, of dreams coming true, and of being at the top of your profession as well. So your outcomes cards could not be better. If you are still in your healing phase, know that this is where you're going, where everything that you're reaching for will come to you easily in the future. But that first you had to... Sh you likely had a, an experience when you were growing up where being a people pleaser towards a volatile person in your life was one of the ways to keep them calm. That it carried forward into your other relationships as an adult and that your guides have been trying to help you shed that tendency towards allowing people who take advantage of you to stay in your life. And that that is one of the phases that you had to go through in order to make all of the new things start happening. And that those new things contain being very admired in the field that you're in, that the achievement that you're trying to make in that field that you can rise to the very top of your field, but that this was an integral part of being able to make that happen because the more successful you are, the more hangers on you will encounter and that you have to be very good at spotting the people who are taking advantage of you. We have Owl. Good advice from a wise person. Well, that's delightful. <laughs> Hopefully they're talking about what I just said. And then we have August, which is interesting. Now, the month cards are always interesting because that is the accumulation of the summer. That is the season where everything is flourishing and growing. It is also typically the Leo season. Um, does it mean that that's going to be a very productive time of your life? It is. It's just that what it's mostly pointing to is that the growing season of your life is, I'm not going to say coming to an end, but that you've achieved fruition, that you've like, you're entering the, <laughs> the boss level of your uh, spiritual enlightenment and your spiritual development. And that what it's leading towards is like this energy of, if you're a healer, you're going to be like a very in-demand healer. If you are trying to achieve something on the stage, then know that you will have the, um, the accolades and the praise of others with the star card in the upright. Let's get one more on this particular energy, this particular deck. These again are the positive attributes of where we're going to get the challenges because there will still be challenges. It's like keeping us in tune with our perfect, with our personal energy, with our personal engine. All right, we have torch. Spiritual, <laughs> spiritual development, enlightenment, awareness, and understanding. Okay, so that's what this period has been about, is helping you gain an understanding of who belongs in your life and who doesn't. But your overall fortune is one of achievement, of accolades, of admiration, of making the dreams that you have hoped for come true. If you have been struggling with something like the law of attraction, you know that you had to resolve some energies around who you allow into your life because our guides will hold things back from manifesting if we're allowing the type of people into our lives who would take rather than share, meaning that somebody who is in it for their own gain. And as I said, I've got somebody coming towards you with a mea culpa, I'm sorry, I did this thing. And you're supposed to really evaluate it from the standpoint of, because the eight of wands in reverse is something being blocked with clarity. 
remember, an apology is not the same thing as a changed person. It's just that they're using a new tactic is the thing that you want to remember. Let's see what we've got from the challenge part of the tea leaf. This is an enormous deck, and really the only way to use it effectively that I've found is to cut it into two different types of energies, to be able to separate them. And again, there will be, everything needs to be in balance, and that's why there will always be challenges to our successes. Vulture, ah, depression, anxiety, worry that someone is against you, worrying that someone is against you. Um, I don't think it's just related to the person that I'm picking up who wants to apologize for their own agenda. I think that it that person will have damaged your ability to trust and that you have to remember that even though, like when you've resolved the energy with this particular person, it will resolve that energy. You will have to be guarded because people will try and come and take advantage of you. And it is the skills that you have been gaining through a difficult journey about who belongs there and who doesn't. Because you're gonna have like multiple people. Here's what I need to talk to you about with this energy vampire thing. They can be so good at being charming at first. They can be the best, best friend, the best boyfriend, the best girlfriend, the best person friend, the best everything as their, their, their lead. That's how they get you. And then they turn somebody who's zapping your energy, who like is withholding love, trying to make you chase that, that approval, that initial wooing that they did in whatever capacity that it was. Once you're able to recognize that that is what someone is doing, you are able to protect yourself from the same type of people who will continue to come towards you until you gain the skill set. But this particular reading is talking about how you're doing that and how you've done that. If you're in process on it, please keep going. Time is a fluid structure, and so different people will be at different points in their journey when they're drawn to this pile. Let's get one more on this one. Flag, do not be tempted to lower your standards. And I want one more. Uh, lobster. Financial pinch, okay. Um, I don't, oh, okay, no, it does not, there's no financial deprivation on this card, by the way. There's no de financial deprivation on it. But what they are telling you is to not uh, do things against your value system to gain money. And I, the only example that I know of that's gonna be safe for everybody so that nobody else feels called out is to talk about the number of people who have asked me to do magic for them that is against my value system. Whether it's cursing somebody for revenge or trying to get somebody to break up or doing love magic for somebody who's like really not in the space to provide that type of love for that person. I have, I've had to say no a lot. Even though it can be very, 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 very lucrative to do magic that is against my core values. And it's not judging it for other people, just we have to have sound judgment for ourselves. And that's what we're talking about, is that don't do things solely for financial gain. Do things in this quest for this, these, this recognition of talent that, it, that is really in service of your highest self. Because you will have a tendency to attract people that are trying to use that specialness that you have. This fortune reading thing is being, because it, it really seems to be very achievement oriented and how to achieve the energy that will bring you the success that you want. Let's check our Endora fortune cards. We've also got some fortune reading cards and I'll get those as well. One, two, three, and four. I have a lot of energy around this one. It actually feels really, really good. I mean the entire reading. The unicorn, good fortune and friendship. The oracle, ooh, seek wisdom and guidance from elders. Don't be afraid to seek out uh, personal advice. Um, it, like, get a re it, like, it doesn't have to be me, but like getting a reader, reading from somebody that you really trust is something that can help you with your path. Particularly when it comes to career, this is all very, very career oriented. Um, that it can help to have that different perspective because you've got two cards of getting advice from another person. What else do we need here? And it can be a trusted friend, but remember, people are at their worst when money's on the line. So try to have somebody who has a professional detachment. Son, open your heart to the enormous growth ahead, and let's see what this guy who wanted out patience. Slow down, change your attitude, and clear your mind. This is a card of patience. Hey, listen, if you feel like yodeling like the Swiss Miss, whatever you hear the word patience, because it's just frustrating, it's like a frustrating thing to be told that you're trying to develop patience, 
If you still feel frustrated at the idea of being patient is something that you are still trying to develop. Because patience, when you have it, is actually a super peaceful energy. And that's what they're trying to help you achieve. Is so that when you have success, you enjoy it. Know that you are protected as you face challenges, but remain cautious. So you have this very protected energy. Do not be tempted to lower your standards for money is one of the main messages here. You're gonna, whatever you're doing, it's a field that can contain that, is that corrupting influences may in fact be around you and try to lead you. But that to listen to your inner guidance, and again, having somebody who you respect as, and it, it's him whose opinion you respect, who has something to teach you is an important thing. If you're trying to develop a business, don't forget, there's something called SCORE, which is the society of like retired executives that can actually like help you with things like a business plan. It's S-C-O-R-E, I believe. And they're throughout the United States. I don't know about other countries, but they should be able to help. If you go to the SCORE website, they should be able to direct you to other things um, that have to do with resources within your own country. Remember, there are small business administrations that can help you with your prospectus and a couple of other things for the energy around trying to achieve financially. Have courage. Awaken the warrior of light within you. We have a challenging time around us in the world. And to remember to commit yourself to your highest self and that you will live in that protected energy. Okay? That is part of the reason to not simply do things for gain because that does have to do with, unfortunately, a lot of our world is controlled by greed and by the quest for more, 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 more. And that, that doesn't actually provide a lot of resonant connection. It's nice, who doesn't like luxury? Who doesn't like opulence? Who doesn't like comfort? But to remember, and I've said this in a podcast, I actually originally encountered it from a podcast guest, um, Ariana Plotten, who talked about money being a tool, not an end goal. Remember, money is a tool, it is not an end goal. And why is that so important? Because it won't corrupt what you will choose when you remember money is there to make me happy to accomplish the things that I want. Trying to amass it is it's a losing game. There is no way to ever have a big enough number to feel secure and safe and happy because the number itself cannot make you secure and safe and happy. The things you can do with that number can. And to not amass wealth for the sake of having it and never to impress other people. That is one thing you have to be free of when you're going to be truly successful, is understanding that what other people think of you is something that you will have to learn to simply let go. For my pile number two people, the only thing standing in your way of a great success is a tendency to allow people who don't belong in your energy to linger there and to examine the people around you to make sure that they belong by your side and that you're not they're not making you chase them on any level and just to kind of keep that part in mind awaken the magic of your creativity immerse your world in the in, immerse yourself in the world of feelings with the tree of wishes is calling your name an almost forgotten wish will now come true okay so you're a master of light on high and awaken the warrior of light within you we're all going to be asked to fight some battles. We're all going to be asked to fight some battles, but it's so that we can learn our own strength, so that we can develop the ability to be patient, to know that everything really does happen in the time that it is meant to. Divine timing is a maddening concept. Did a podcast on that too, because it's not a marked point on a calendar or a clock. It's when everything is in energetic alignment. That's that temperance energy. That's that patience energy. And to, if you want to like reframe how you're thinking about the quality of your journey, to remember that absolutely everything that is brought to you, when you ask for help, it will be given, but that the lessons that are brought to you are sometimes difficult. So for the challenges that come your way, to try and examine them for what is this trying to teach me? Rather than what out there doesn't like me or you know why did I get so unlucky? Ask yourself as an adult, what is this trying to teach me? What weakness within myself that I'm trying to strengthen is this trying to reveal? Who doesn't belong in my life? Who doesn't deserve a place at my table? And as I said, I have somebody that wants to, like they're going to apologize, but it's a ploy. It's a ploy. One of the things about, one of the hallmarks of narcissists is they don't apologize. Sometimes they will. 
if they think it will serve their agenda. They, uh, everything that they do can have an agenda around gaining what they want. And they'll use people. And particularly for a lot of empaths, a lot of intuitives, a lot of sensitive people are drawn towards tarot. And there is this thing with the um, empath narcissist paradigm where you have to be careful. And it doesn't mean you have to be careful forever. Once you learn how to spot them, the people who are working an agenda, and if you haven't in the past, understand that it had to be a learned skill for you because it wasn't innate to you, that it wasn't a part of you, that you had to learn about it, unfortunately, through some difficult experience. But all of your dreams are trying to come true. And that the only thing I have is a reminder around do not lower your standards to make money. That what you want is actually possible, but that you need to go towards it in your most authentic energy to get the happiness that comes with the success that you are trying to achieve. Allow. You're being asked to open your energy field and take down your walls of protection in order to allow goodness into your life. Sometimes, without even realizing it, we block ourselves from the flow of life. It's safe to open yourself back up. So, what can happen after you have found who does not belong in your life is that you can be too closed off to others. It's a normal and a natural part of that period of growth. What is coming up for you is an opportunity to reject somebody from your life who is trying to offer an insincere apology to try and take advantage of you again. Having done that, in the aftermath, you may distrust too many people and you need to remind yourself that as I am different, the people who are drawn towards me will be different and I need to allow more into my life. There may be some challenges because we invest our, our self-worth in how much money we have because the world tells us to do that. The world has an agenda on that. It's very, 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 very greed-centric. Do not invest your self-worth in that area. Invest it in admiring your own choices, in being an authentic version of you, and that the people who, when you are living in that authentic energy, when you're not doing things, do not be tempted to lower your standards. When you are living in the standards that are in service to your highest good, that those who are drawn to you, that you will allow to remain, will be the people who are meant to help support that journey and you in turn will support them. But that they're likely to be new people if you've been through a healing phase, that you have been trying to recognize the ties that you are meant to be releasing. There's a lot of clarity around this and a lot of very strong intuition. But there's a reminder here that when you are in a stuck energy, when you feel like you can't make progress, to reach out for the guidance of somebody that you truly trust. And again, it does not have to be me. There are some beautiful, beautiful, wonderful, wonderful readers all over YouTube and in other areas. But please don't forget that there is a role in personal readings that general readings can't cover because general readings have to have this very broad scope and personal readings have a focus. So since you've got two around that, if you find yourself stuck and you're not making any progress, Never forget that there is a lot of worth in gaining the perspective of somebody who has a detachment, okay? Meaning that they're detached from, it's not that they won't care about hurting your feelings, but that it's a lot easier in a professionally detached setting to tell somebody something that might be difficult to hear, but is necessary for their progress. That our friends have a tendency to try and make us feel better. Advisors have a tendency to tell us what we need to accomplish in order to achieve the goals that we're trying to achieve. There's a lot of achievement energy on this, and the main point of this entire reading is keep going, keep going. More and more is actually coming. Celebration, big success. Okay, we have financial loss over here. That is spending money sometimes, don't worry. Meaningful coincidences, and then spring. Interesting, that's growth. Um, <laughs> hey, the only thing that I'm seeing from that is a reminder that you, as you become more successful, you will be offered things that are not in alignment with your best interest. And like, I, I, will, I will offer like, you know, uh, it, it can, <laughs> every now and then I will get offered paid partnerships. <laughs> and I'll tell you about the one I keep turning down because I'm like, do you guys even know what I do? It's a hair removal device that they're like, hey, we'll send this to you for free and we'll pay you money for like, and it's like, okay, except I'm a tarot reader. <laughs> it's like, how am I supposed to even do that? 
it's that is that I could take that and try to plug it like in some weird, awkward, you know, cross product development thing. Or I could say, it's not worth that to me. And that's what you really have to remember is that the things that will feather your nest going forward are in alignment with your true values. And to not compromise your values to, for gain and everything will come to you when it is meant to. Celebration and big success, but as you succeed more, you will have to be more discerning about the things that you accept as being worthy of your time and your attention, okay? But the first, the, the challenge energy around this is that vulture. Remember, vultures feed off of other things. Somebody trying to take advantage of you, and it looks like they're opening gambit, is to try and offer you an apology for something they did in the past so that they can gain access to you again. And that you can accept the apology, but that an apology does not mean that they have a seat at your table. Pile number two, a good successful energy with a very key fortune reminder of as you are more successful, more opportunities come to you. Be discerning and wise in your choices. And then you did have something about seeking professional advice. Particularly if you're in business development, please listen to me on the, there really are volunteer organizations that can help you with a business development plan. Take advantage of things that are free to help you learn new skills and allow somebody else's perspective into your plan for success. Listen to the advice of those who have your best interests at heart, okay? Take care. Be well. That was your reading. If you want to book me for a private reading, you can do so at aftherisingmoon.com. It's the only way to book me. There's a link to my website in the description box down below. I have a Patreon with Monday through Friday spiritual advice. I'm also teaching how to read tarot, particularly reversals on it. That's a slow process, but there's always the Spirit Guide Daily is there now. And um, Logical Magic Examining Esoterica is my podcast. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Be well. Welcome back. Hey, if you chose pile number three, this is your reading. We're putting the number three over there so that people can easily fast forward to their reading. But there are timestamps in the description box down below. There always are. Tarot of the Divine is going to be bringing you the infinity spread that I use for YouTube readings. We have the tea leaf reading fortune cards that I separate into two piles. One is like these very positive attributes and one of them has a tendency to be a little bit about challenges. And we'll get cards from both of those and then oracle cards that pertain to fortune reading as well. This has been a really, really positive reading so far and group number three, I hope that that energy continues for you. Let's get going with your reading. What do we have for pile number three? What is in their, what's in their future? What's their fortune? Remember, it can't, co it can't uh, cover all areas of your life because it's a general reading. And it also has limited scope around timeframes. Um, I try to make sure that I'm reading within a one to two year window. Because even though it's nice to know what be, might be happening five years from now, it's it's not as um, actionable. It's not as actionable. I have a lot of healing advice in the readings that I do. Hey guys, before I get started, please don't forget to subscribe because it helps my channel. If you like the reading, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to book me for a private reading, you can do so through AtTheRisingMoon.com. It's the only way to book me. Um, and then I have a podcast, Logical Magic, Examining as a Carica. We have the Chariot in the upright as the first card going down. That is a card of success. That is a card of things moving swiftly. It's a card of travel as well. It's moving forward. It can be a card of being pulled in two directions. I'm not feeling it that way this year. I have it with the Strength card in the upright. Two major arcana right in a row. A card of overcoming challenges, of courage, of being very admired, of being compassionate in the choices that you make, both towards yourself and towards others. I have the Seven of Wands in reverse, which is that surrender, surrender to the universal energy. Um, one of the things I'm teaching on that Patreon is uh, reversals and how to read them. And the Seven of Wands, reversals are not bad. The Seven of Wands in reverse is actually a really good card. It is a card of the battles you know not to fight and of surrender and of allowing things to flow, of going with the universal flow. Comes out with the High Priestess in the Upright, which is the card of enigmas and mystery, and it can be the card of psychic connection and learning new things as well. The thing that you need to remember is you don't need to try very hard to make things happen, to try and live in a relaxed energy. If, if you keep getting this message, examine whether or not you've actually taken it in and are acting upon it. Or if you spend a lot of time saying, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to get this done. 
meet your responsibilities, but don't think that excess amount of effort is the thing that will cause you to achieve. Um, we have new things happening for you as well. I like this high priestess as because like there's this very open energy with this particular high priestess. She's in this very relaxed energy. You will feel more in flow in the coming year than you have in the last three, okay? The moon in the upright, this is a lot of major arcana. Major arcana are fateful forces at work in your life. It means most of our life is about the choices that we make, but we do have these fateful occurrences in our life and they are marked by the major arcana. Um, a fateful instance, maybe this is an arbitrary number, but maybe you have 10 fateful occurrences in your life. They come to you when you're energetically ready for them. The thing that determines your energetic readiness is the choices that you make on your path. With the three of wands in reverse, so it's having a lot of opportunities and choosing from them, it's also being open to new adventures and to new things, nine of cups in reverse. And, okay, release a feeling of disappointment around the uh, pace of your journey. It's happening as it's meant to, and things are brought to you as the lessons that you learn begin to benefit your energy. You're a very gifted person when you get the high priestess in the upright. If I get that with the star, I always know that I'm reading like somebody who's likely a fellow reader. I get the two ones in the upright, which is a crossroads energy, making plans, making commitments. It's the world is your oyster card as well. Ace cups in the upright, lots of emotional fulfillment. That is the holy grail card, is the card of your cup runneth over. Lots more coming into your life. With the page of wands in reverse, there is some frustration with this. I'm gonna, t I, I didn't on the other ones. I don't wanna leave it there. Mm, yes, I do. Um, because it's the other meaning of the page of wands in reverse is the things that you know you're not supposed to do. Don't do too much trying to make what you want happen in this world. Remember, what is meant to you is coming to you. It is flowing to you at the, ra at the rate that will be best for you. And when you get frustrated with the pace of the journey, of learning new things, of healing old things, that things will come to you as they benefit you. And that when sometimes things are held back, because there's a slight energy of that here, not as much as with another pile. I just have this disappointment around, it's like you had a treasure dream that did not work out. And it might have been in a professional capacity or it might have been a personal one that if you wanted a partnership or you wanted a uh, promotion or you wanted a uh, career that was denied to you, it wasn't that you were being denied, it's that with all these fateful cards, something else was in your fateful path. Um, there is a tendency towards anxiety for you that you need to be very on top of caring for. When you're feeling anxious, it means you need to stop doing as much as you're doing. Please learn to recognize your energetic signs. It will actually, even if it feels like that is counterintuitive, what do you mean doing less, relaxing more, will bring me more. Doesn't that mean I'll just get less done? No, it will mean that you know how to appropriately care for yourself in a way that you won't sacrifice self to make something happen. It will have to be right for you, for you to invest your energy in it. Now, here's the thing, you do have to find a method for expressing frustration because it builds up a little bit in you and if you don't learn how to express it, it turns into anxiety for you. And that's what you need to understand is that sometimes you're struggling with trying to figure out how to deal with what feels like a negative emotion. But it's actually just trying to put you in touch with whether or not you're feeling drained. You have a small problem with doing too much and trying to push through because you think that's the strong choice. It's not, it's the self-punishing choice and to not make that a part of your path going forward. I have good luck with the horseshoe card. I have ring with the, a marriage will take place, either a romantic or business. We'll pull from the love oracle because I had another deck that had a romantic energy in this. This does not appear to be something that is focusing on romance. It appears to be like, apparently my guides are very, very literal because they were taking the fortune part of this title very, very, very literally. There does seem to be opportunity in business with Lion, time to act. Good luck in business. There's a lot of, 
there's a lot that you could do and you need to be discerning in the choices that you make about what you will do. But there is success on this table and there's more emotional fulfillment. And it came, it's, it's coming. It's coming after a period of confusion, of uh, being overwhelmed sometimes. Okay, we'll take you. We have flowers, like half the deck fell out of my hands, but I'll try again. Be generous, success and emotional fulfillment are yours. When you do too much, it, it contributes to a feeling of frustration, of anger, of how you view other people. It gives you a very dim eye towards other people. It's a real mood spoiler for you when you're overextending yourself. And to remember, and this message comes through from my little workaholic collective over and over again, they will bring things to a grinding halt until you learn how to appropriately balance your life, meaning too much work, and they will start making the opportunities disappear. Too much like frivolity and like your relationships are likely to like, <laughs> you'll attract people who aren't in service of your best good. But that's not something that this particular collective has a tendency to suffer from. My collective is a put your head and shoulders to the wheel and push as hard as you can until you shift that mountain or that blockage out of your way. And they're trying to tell you, please don't feel like that's what you have to do. Even if it's taking a long time for something to be achieved, it is for your good. It is to try and help you because you get angry. When you're tired, your temper runs short. And that is something that you don't like. It impacts how you feel about yourself. And so that's part of the reason that they made it their priority in helping you learn how to cope with that part of your nature in a productive way. To recognize running short on energy or being short on patience or being uh, quick to anger is a sign that you're doing too much. Celebrations, you are ready to bring new and exciting things into your life. And we do have snake. Your intuition and healing powers will guide you to a better path, but be careful. Be careful, be careful. This message has come through multiple times over the course of several years that they will make your journey slow down until you will learn this lesson. And it isn't because they don't want you to have what you want. It's because they want you to be happy while you have it. That you've never ever been misled on whether or not all the things that you're hoping are coming to be. Greater happiness, greater connection, for some people, apparently, let's go ahead and get the challenge card and then we'll get a love card. That for some people, it's going to encompass a human being, a, a soulmate, a real marriage, a real partnership, but that you're being able to recognize your own limitations has been a struggle for you. And that that is the lesson that might have been happening. If you've learned it already, then that's when everything starts occurring. If you are resisting it, know that that's what will slow things down, but that it is in service of your greatest success and your happiness. Shark, take care or there will be a loss of material wealth. Okay. And then I have seahorse, family matters. And then fox uh, fell out as well. Shrewdness and resourcefulness, especially in business. So, mm, there will be a loss of material wealth. I do not get that on this table at all, but I think that ties perfectly into what I was just talking about, how they, honest to goodness, will slow things down to a real snail's pace to try and make you be careful with how you extend your energy and who you extend your energy towards. And then there is, I haven't seen this in a while, but I do have this, energy on this particular pile of you are trying to achieve something. It is very much trying to be in your life, but that you can be, I'm not going to say self-destructive, but that you can be self-punishing in your pursuit of that success. And to remember that it's not success if it's making you feel terrible and that it, you pay a price for it because your mood is uh, all over the place and your temper is quick, and you find yourself irritated and dissatisfied when you push yourself too hard. 
but that learn that lesson of being like, I check in with how I feel even as I am doing something. If I get up in the day and I'm like, I wanna get this done, I wanna get this one, I wanna get this done, then also tell yourself with, I'm gonna, after I do this, I will check in and make sure that I can do the next thing. And after I'm done doing that, I'm gonna check in with myself. And if I'm not happy, if I'm not energized, if I'm not in a good humor, I won't do it. I'll save it for another day. Don't have a false sense of urgency around trying to get things done. Everything is happening in the time that it is meant to happen. But that the world is your oyster energy, the ability to have it all is within your grasp once you, this is one of the cards for learning new things and being adaptable and having new things come to you, once you learn the ability to self-regulate the energy that you put into what you're trying to achieve. And I promise we're gonna get some love cards on this one because you, you guys got just an outright love card. All right, not every pile did. Like I said, I think my, guard, my guides got really literal with the word fortune. The king, authority and diplomacy, the stars. A long journey brings rewards. And then hindrance, fate has blocked this path for you with the dagger, conflict and danger lie in wait, and then the unicorn, good fortune and friendship. Until you learn that lesson around the conflict and danger, it is literally telling you what I just said, is that you have trouble recognizing that the conflict and danger, you get frustrated and short on temper. When your, your temper flares when you're too tired, when you're doing too much. And then you don't like yourself very much. And so they just, they want you to be happy. And if you keep thinking, well, if, if you really want me to be happy, you'd give me what I want. Not if you're gonna do something self-destructive with it. And you don't view overwork as being a self-destructive habit, but it is. But you will get those rewards when you learn that lesson. Let's go with the, let's take a message as a love card. Leap of faith. It's safe to make the move you're considering, but it's also the card of, like, a, have faith that everything comes to you when it's meant to. Believe that there is something on your side. Even if it hasn't felt that way, <laughs> we are most resistant to the most important messages because the most important messages have to do with our core unauthentic self and the ways in which we need to work in conjunction with, not in contradiction of, our shadow side, meaning that this tendency towards anger that is present in these cards, they are giving you the remedy. It is in a very, very careful work-life balance and that whenever you pull it out of balance, they will slow things down. They will slow things down, not because they're trying to deny you, but because they're trying so hard to help you. To help you get your best outcome, and that's where you're not seeing the difference, is that there's a difference between getting what you want and it being good for you sometimes. They're trying to tell you how to make the thing that you want be good for you. Forgiveness. And then it does come out with Twin Flame, which another pile got that message. Well, leap of Faith, Forgiveness, Twin Flame. Like, literally, almost. Um, listen, that's not necessarily forgiving a Twin Flame. What it can be is maybe you had a twin flame dynamic in your life that didn't work out so well and that it was brought to you and it was to help you recognize the ways in which your choices were not serving your highest good sometimes. For some people, it really might be it's time to forgive a twin flame and maybe they've done their work and it's time for a real union. Twin flames can only come together when everyone involved has done their work. If somebody is really your twin flame and you've done your work, then that person will return to you. And they will be, like, it'll be getting to know each other all over again because they will be a very different person. But really the only way to achieve union is to do your work. Apology. All right. So forgiveness, twin flame, and apology. In some instances, this will differ. This is where general readings stop short of being able to take the place of personal readings. For some people, it really is your guides are apologizing to you for a twinkling connection that was, it really rang you out. It really was like, why did you bring that to me if you're gonna drive me crazy with it? To help you make choices that were in service of your highest good. For still others, because we do have this over here, it really will be a twin flame has done all their work. They have also done the work that they need to and they are meant to be in your life and they will apologize to you for the way that they have treated you. Now here's the way to know 
if this if that's what this is for you if you hear that and you're like i don't have a lot of feelings left there it was just a lesson at this point then it may be your message if it means a lot a lot a lot to you if there's still longing involved there's still work to be done because when we're really healed we know that the people who are meant to be with us they're there at the, they're either right there or they're not meant to be with us at this time. And we let things go that are not meant to be in our energy at this particular point. Please don't focus too much on that, okay? This reading was really about the overcommitment of energy to something that you're trying to achieve. It can also be present within romantic relationships. And I see that a lot in twin flame situations where somebody is just like, they're really hanging on for somebody who's not in an emotional place to give them the love that they deserve because they've got too much work to do. It's not about being a good or a bad person, it's just like the person has to do their work. Recognize when you are putting in more energy than is good for you in your personal and your professional life and you will achieve. Your fortune is to achieve, but the way to make this happen is to accept that you are being asked to examine your relationship to being frustrated and being angry and doing too much. That it makes you feel like you're running on fumes sometimes. We have lightning, sudden change, shocking news, surprise, epiphany, upheaval, and transformation, and then soulmates. Soul connections, partnership agreement, soul contract, the butterfly, relationship evolving to the next phase, healing the inner child, and growth. Hey, listen, that is going to be super, super personal stuff. It's going to be personal reading stuff, and it does not have to be by me. But please remember that general readings, they contain the energies that are possible for you. If this is what you want, if this is what you want, if you're like, that is what I want, I want a union with my twin flame, then do your work. Listen to the suggestions around don't overcommit your energy. It is the thing that blocks you. It is the thing that... You'll do things to extremes sometimes, and it's not a criticism, it is a reminder of how to achieve the success that you want and to have it make you happy. Because that's what they're all about. Shrewdness and resourcefulness, especially in business. Make wise choices in how you use your energy. Success isn't success if it doesn't make you actually happy. We're only happy for a brief time when we get what we want. And then if we haven't made the internal changes that will bring us resonant happiness and joy from moment to moment, it's fleeting. It's why like people can get a bonus or a promotion and like they're really happy until like they're, that's no longer the new and shiny thing that distracted them from their frustration. We're, when we want something and then we get it, if we're in that I only am happy when I'm getting what I want energy rather than inhabiting the energy that is best for me, that makes me feel most connected, that makes me feel most powerful, then it, it just, it depletes us when we are always looking towards an exterior source for our internal happiness. Your internal happiness is served by having a very good work-life balance. I like everything here. Opportunity within the next few weeks. Reconsider, interesting, big happy changes. So pile number three, Le learn these lessons and things happen quickly. This is the pile that had the most uh, information about love. And that there, it does appear to have something to do with potentially either in, in like a twin flame coming into union, which can happen. And if it's not where you're like, nope, that twin flame thing, nothing could ever happen with that. I've outgrown that idea. I'm never, ever, ever going to invest my energy in somebody who didn't choose me at the same level I was choosing them. It will be an opportunity to release and resolve that connection so that the real deal can come to you. The, one, the person who's ready to stand by your side in the same energy. And again, if any of that's upsetting to you to hear, it's just when you're healed you kind of examine who's really worthy, who's deserving of my time and my energy. And the only person who's ever really going to be deserving of your time and energy is somebody who treats your love as a tremendous gift and doesn't wish to lose it, doesn't run away from it, isn't afraid of the intensity of it. 
please keep that part in mind because like this is the pile that had the most about love in it and that either way that like you have the power in your life to bring a truly deep connection into your life but it does have to do with recognizing when you're doing something that might be harming you more than it's helping you it was mostly in work that this was talking about and your ability to overcommit your energy in pursuit of something. If you're overcommitting your energy, that only ever will lead to depletion, to exhaustion, to frustration, and to anger. You're, you're, the whole fortune thing is that like, you're going to succeed, but you have a lot of choice in how you succeed. Back off and don't try too hard. Take care of your emotional world. Take care of your wants and your needs and prioritizing having fun and you will still succeed. You do not need to, you know, bust your back trying to make something happen. Things that are right for you happen when you give the appropriate amount of energy and attention and we're not to live our life in an unbalanced state because that brings us unbalanced results. Let your joy in life be about what you are experiencing not something that you're trying to make happen so that you feel worthwhile. Life feels worthwhile every single day, every single moment when you're healed, okay? Take care, be well. You had a lot of advice on leaning on healing that particular area of your life and please examine how much energy you commit to any area of your life and whether or not you're getting a strong return on it. Pay very close attention to your temper, to whether or not you're frustrated. That is the clearest red flag around needing to make a change there. Okay, take care, be well.